podcast. My name is Jaira, your host, and welcome to episode two of Real and Radiant. We're here. We're actually, we're doing it. We are doing the thing. I hope you enjoyed the first episode last week and got a sense of what's to come for this podcast. And just in case this is your first time hearing uh, Real and Radiant, just a little recap on what this podcast is about. It is a place where we talk about what inner beauty really is through faith and through the outward things that we all like and enjoy, like fashion, style, beauty. But we're even getting into some other facets of life in this broken but beautiful world. And for this episode, we're getting deep. We're getting skin deep. You know, I've re- I'm really praying as I prepare for these episodes. Um... I I want them to be intentional. I want them to be uh, a a leading from the Lord. And one morning during my quiet time last week, as I was praying about episode two, I, I sat down, I prayed, and the Holy Spirit just downloaded this topic and ideas and even sentences and an outline on this subject. I specifically felt the Holy Spirit just say, Don't let this struggle go to waste. As in, don't let this struggle be kept to you and yourself only. Share it because someone else may be going through something similar too. And I think I always knew that I would share about this topic because it's something I've had for literally almost my whole life. It's grounded me. It's allowed me to be more compassionate towards others. It's given me patience and it's forced me to humble myself to be quite honest I always talk about outer and inner beauty and I might as well just share one of the things I've struggled with literally since I was a baby in regards to my outer appearance and that's my skin let me just start off by saying I have the most sensitive skin ever when people say they have sensitive skin, yet their fl- face is like flawless, I'm like, yo, let me tell you, because my skin has just always been so sensitive. I do want to share my journey because I, like I said last last week, right, I, I don't want this to be a podcast where it's Dear Diary and I'm, it's a venting session and I'm just sharing all these struggles, but I'm sharing it, I'm sharing this because it's really not about me, but it's what God has been doing in my life throughout these past 30 years of trying to kind of conquer through these struggles. Um, And so I just want to take a minute, um, take a moment to share my journey with you. And I hope, you know, if you're going through something similar, it also encourages you. So just bear with me for a minute. So my skin has always been a struggle of mine since I was a baby. And when I was asking my mom about, you know, um, me uh, when I was a baby with my skin in preparation for this podcast episode, um, I actually learned a lot of things I didn't know about. So two to three weeks after I was born, I had eczema and my whole body was flushed red. It was just so red. And my mom said, I just look so uncomfortable and helpless and of course when people would look at me when I was a baby um, it's very hard to just ignore you know your skin the largest organ of your body and people would just ask what happened to her skin what happened to her skin my parents felt so bad for me because they didn't know if it would go away but thankfully uh, she went to see a pediatric and um, they prescribed medicine and three days after it went away and my mom calls it the miracle medicine but little did I know that miracle medicine would be the first of many 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 miracle medicines I would be taking throughout my life so fast forward to the teenage years started having breakouts which is very normal right like we're, we're we've all been there when you're a teenager you hit those years and that's of course when my journey at the dermatologist started 
we actually went to a Filipino derma in Troy, Michigan for 10 years. She's awesome. I love her. If you're in the Troy area, if you're in the Michigan area looking for a derma, let me know. For these 10 years, I would get what we called, or what I called cleanings. I'm sure there's a more professional term to it, but I would get these cleanings, you know, where um, you may have gotten it, but you sit down at the... At, at the dermatologist they put a steamer to your face to let all you all of your pores open up and then once everything is open and moist and ready to go they take their tools and they extract all of the blackheads the whiteheads all the beautiful stuff (laughs) on your face and man that stuff really hurt if you've gone through that you know where I'm coming from but This was also when I went on Accutane. So I was a senior in high school. It was a glorious time because it cleared my skin up. I would even push it and and test it uh, during my senior year. I was on the dance team and I would just sleep with makeup on from my performances. So I would sleep with, you know, all the foundation, the, the packed on blush and eyeliner and the fake eyelashes I didn't know how to use back then and the next morning I still had no breakouts it was awesome it was really awesome um with Accutane you gotta it's a process you have to get blood work every month but it was so worth it however during this time this is when I also started getting steatocystoma and this wow this is really happening this is, this is what I was hesitant in, in sharing with you in this episode. Um, I, I, a lot of people don't even know this about me, not that I share it out there, uh, but I started getting steatocystoma when I was about 17, and it's basically when there is a mutation in a gene called keratin 17 and you start to develop cysts mine are more so on my back and they're not pimples they're not zits and you can't just extract them like like a zit or a pimple if it if it doesn't go away on your own you either have to get it lasered um but most of the time it just comes back So uh, that's when I started getting steatocystoma. If you're looking online what that is, mine is pretty mild. Make sure you don't have any kids around you right now when you're researching because some pictures are (laughs) quite graphic. Uh, Just to forewarn you. So, um, but that's something I've I've had since I was 17. Moved to the Philippines. This is now um, 2010. And I had breakouts here and there. Not terrible. My steatocystoma was was still pretty mild. Um, and I even went on two more rounds of Accutane while I was here during this time. But apparently I wasn't taking the correct dosage. So it wasn't working, obviously. And then I just, I just stopped. I was kind of over the Accutane at that point. And then... We're almost there, guys. We're almost done. 2021, besides the pandemic in the world, there was a pandemic on my skin. My skin last year just reacted like as if I was two to three weeks old. First quarter, I wore, I think I wore just a cheap surgical mask and I got a nasty allergic reaction from it. And you could you could tell it was from the mask, not just because I have my my skin, but you can tell it was from the mask because the rash on my face was literally the shape of a face mask. Like from afar, you'd think I'd have one on and it was like red. Praise God, it healed. Halfway into the year, for whatever reason, the skin around my hairline started to get rashes and it just, it felt tough, like leathery. So... Thankfully, again, that died down. Then, towards the end of last year, I just had an overall breakout, not only on my face, but my whole body. And it really was like when I was a baby with my eczema. It came back on my legs, my arms, my torso, everywhere. And I, you know, try not to scratch, but it's inevitable. And unfortunately now, I have 
scars and marks and little nicks and some, you know, rashes on my skin these past few months. I went to a new derma when this was all happening. She's super nice, by the way. Thank you, Lord, for really nice and kind dermatologists. And she said, I am a walking textbook for eczema. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. That's great. So, yes, even currently, right now, I'm still in it. I'm fully made uh, made up. I, I have some meetings today, and um, I thank God for makeup. Uh, but, you know, underneath it all, it's still very much there. I'm applying lotions, ointments, creams, oral meds. We're trying new things. We're trying um, liners. If you look up K-pads. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying pretty much anything <laughs> at this point. So that's where I'm at. And... Okay, so why am I sharing all of this with you, right? In the first time of my 10 years of my sharings online with the blogs and YouTube, why am I sharing this? Because those who are silently struggling with their skin or something similar, you're not alone. You'd never know that I was going through all of this. I was just talking with my small group. And as I'm, I'm slowly opening up to the world about, you know, my skin. And I said, you'd never know because we've, first of all, been in a pandemic and everything's online. So you're not seeing anything in person. Um, and I wear makeup. I know how to apply makeup. I'm very thankful again for that. Um, and I also just cover up with clothes, not just because I'm modest, but I intentionally just don't show much skin. I haven't worn a backless top in years. And because of the state of my skin right now, I probably won't be out wearing shorts or a dress no matter how hot it gets in the Philippines because of the scars on my legs and my legs texture right now. Girl, it is not cute. It's not cute. All right. So how am I living with it on a daily basis? You know, this is what works for me. And I'm again, I'm, I'm sharing because people have always told me for whatever reason how are you so joyful you're shining and I've I've literally been asked do you ever have a bad day literally and I can only give God the glory for all of that but I want to share how he helps me rise above it all number one I do what I can on my part on my end I told myself if I can't change it if this mutation in this gene in this, what is it, keratin 17, if is if it's mutating I and I can't change it, I'll just do what I can on my part. I'll take care of my body. I'll work out. won't order as much. I'll go to a reputable dermatologist or doctor who can prescribe um, and they know what's happening and they can prescribe what I need so I can get better. And uh, I, I need to be disciplined in applying everything. But if I can't change it, I will do what I can to the best I can on my end. Number two is perspective. I know it could be much worse. You know, I, I get discouraged at night, especially right before I sleep, just, you know, kind of just looking at my skin. Um, and even though my body is scarred, though, I'm still thankful for two arms two legs, two feet, 10 fingers, you know, I'm complete. I remember years and years ago, I came across an article. Goodness, I don't even, I don't even remember how I got on this article, but it's talking about a man in India and they call him tree man. So you can only imagine, right? The skin condition that he had, the very, very rare skin condition he had if he's being called tree man okay and so ever since I read that article when I was younger and I would get discouraged about you know the 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 scarring on my face or the scarring on my body I just think you know thank you Lord that it's not that bad but I want to emphasize that it God has like cursed this man or that he doesn't love tree man from India you know but perspective 
Number three is gratitude. You know, last year when I got my flare up, it was so bad, it actually hurt to walk. Listen, I know it's not anywhere close to leprosy, but because of my faith and, you know, I, I, I really try to see and read and get encouraged by God's word. And the closest thing to what people had back then to what I have now are the lepers. So best believe I read into all the stories in the Bible that talk about lepers and leprosy. And I read up on the story of the 10 lepers in Luke 17, 11 to 19. If you don't know that story, if you don't even read God's word, I'm here to paraphrase it for you. So long story short, which actually it is a very short story. It's only eight verses long, but it just shows you how important it is to be thankful. So Jesus met these 10 lepers on his way to Jerusalem and they asked him for healing and he healed all of them just there on the spot. And just as they all go about the rest of their lives, one, one out of the 10 goes back and says, thank you. Just one. Can you imagine being outcasted for who knows how long and, you know, society, people don't want anything to do with you and you're an outcast and then you're suddenly healed by someone and then not saying thank you jesus jesus is real patient because i get irked when i hold the door for a stranger and they don't say thank you like to be honest so basically i want to be that leper i want to be that eczema (laughs) that came back that comes back to say thank you And, you know, I believe that I will be healed. I pray that it's during this lifetime while I'm here on earth and I'll be able to wear a backless top or even a tank top without feeling insecure or that I'll be able to wear my dresses soon. But if not, I know that when I pass from this life on earth to life and eternity in heaven, he'll definitely heal me then without a shadow of a doubt. Why? Because in Psalm 103, Verse two and three, it says, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heal all your diseases, all of it. So, you know, it, it gratitude, we always hear that, you know, as you start your day, you should always like list or journal out the things you're thankful for. But not only do I want to be quick to thank him when I'm healed, but I want to thank him right now. I want to be a, someone with you know, all of these things happening and being thankful in the present of it all happening. Because I know that this isn't happening to me, but it's happening for me and I'm learning and I'm growing from it. If you're struggling with skin, you know, or if you have a condition, we're in this race together. I honestly only know a handful of people who even have skin issues, to be honest. Um, So more or less, yeah, sometimes I felt alone. But I know in the grand scheme of things, I know I'm not alone. So my last uh, point, number four, is also finding a community who may have what you have exactly, you know, who may have what you have um, and who is encouraging a support group that will help you where you can kind of just ride it through together and search for them online. You know, I found some threads and online groups who have shared their experiences with eczema and steatosystoma. And it's actually really encouraging. Um, you know, they they uh, share about experiences of how, you know, their partners or like their girlfriend, boyfriends or their husband, wives have, have uh, still loved them and accepted them despite it, you know. And uh, they still have great relationships. And uh, sometimes it does suck. But at the same time, you know, th- all you can like life is still going on and you got to go along with it you know i've met people who are beautiful gorgeous stunning on the outside and not to knock on them but they have the ugliest hearts and care for no one else but themselves yes i know jesus still loves them and then i've met people who aren't your model like figure or the world standard of a perfect 10 but they show kindness and compassion and, and love to others around them And let me tell you, I'd much rather spend time and be around those of the latter than those whose heart and inner beauty is ugly. So, friend, besides getting yourself checked out 
and seeing the doctors and going to the consults that you know you need to, let's check our hearts. You know, I can't help but think when Jesus reappeared to his disciples and he reappeared to them with the wounds in his hands. You know, he he defeated the grave. He was resurrected. He came back. He, he was alive. And he could have been flawless, right? Like 100%. But yet he still reappeared to his disciples with the evidence of the wounds where the nails went through his hands. In John 20, verse 20, it says, As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They, the disciples, were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then again, um, just a few verses down, in verse 26, it says, eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. And I think that's just such a powerful visual that God uses our scars. God uses our wounds for a purpose. Jesus literally used his wounds and told Thomas, can you imagine this? To put his finger where the holes in his hands were because of the nails. Can you imagine? And he used those flaws, those scars to show that one, he was real, he's alive. And then he ended it with don't be faithless any longer, believe. So whenever you are discouraged and you're down, I pray that you just lean on him for strength and that your faith will be strengthened. So no matter what you may look like on the outside, what you're struggling with, Let's get radiant from the inside out.